Hi everyone, welcome to another interesting episode of the Fisdom Wealth Peak. Uh, today we have an extremely interesting guest who will be talking on an extremely interesting product category and a product uh, that is soon going to hit the markets. So with us we have Mr. Dinesh Balachandran. So Dinesh is uh, an industry veteran. You would be pleased to know that Dinesh has been with SBI Mutual Fund for over 12 years now. and at some point he was also uh, the head of research for sbi mutual fund but today he leads two of the biggest flagship funds that sbi mutual fund has academically uh, dinesh is in is a graduate from iit bombay he has completed his ms from mit us he is a cfa charter holder uh, professionally he had been working with fidelity us for almost over a decade before he migrated back to india and joined sbi mutual fund So that's about Dinesh. Uh, Dinesh, a very warm welcome to the Fisdom Wealth Peak. It's a pleasure having you on the show. Uh, thanks a lot, Nero. Thank you so much for having me over. So, uh, Dinesh, uh, you know, let's let's uh, cut to the chase and ask uh, and a quintessential question that has been hovering over investors' mind for really, really long now. With SEBI recategorizing and trying to make things so clear. in some pockets of investors it has only led to more confusion and the biggest confusion is how are balanced advantage funds or technically called as dynamic asset allocation funds even different from the aggressive hybrid or erstwhile popularly known as balanced funds what's the difference between balanced funds and balanced advantage funds yeah oh, that's a good question you know when you think about balanced funds balanced funds also have a mix of equity and debt just like balanced advantage funds also have a mix of equity and debt but there is a very big difference and it boils down to essentially the dynamic nature of the asset allocation when you look at the equity hybrid or the balanced fund category uh, which has been quite popular in the past the equity percentage in the fund has broadly always remained in the range of 65 to 75% for the most part right so so with that what is happening is that yes you have a good allocation to equity which helps from a return perspective but there is also a potential negative aspect of it in that because the equity percentage will always be uh, uh, around 65% at the minimum when there is severe volatility in the market when the market essentially uh, experiences big drawdowns then uh, equity hybrid fund will also see pretty significant drawdowns and that can scare away certain investors to give you an example in 2008 when nifty fell by more than 50% balanced funds also fell on average by somewhere close to 40% that's because when you have essentially uh, at least 65% allocated to equity you can't avoid uh, a significant drawdown if the equity markets essentially have a meltdown so that is one uh, significant uh, uh, disadvantage uh, with a equity hybrid fund or a balanced a balanced fund. so that's why the need for balanced advantage funds came in where the thought process is simple that balanced advantage funds also have both equity and debt so that helps in general from a, a risk management perspective but more importantly the equity allocation can be varied in a much more dynamic fashion so depending on essentially the state of the market uh, uh, and depending on the uh, on the uh, the particular fund the equity percentage can go as high as 100% and it can also go as low as uh, 0 to 20% depending on the fund that you talk about right and and so if the fund manager is doing this asset allocation change in a in a uh, in a methodical manner in a logical manner then you can avoid at least the very significant drawdowns uh, uh, that can sometimes be seen in in a uh, uh, equity uh in fact we also have a recent example uh in terms of what happened post the initial covid scare right where markets between february 2020 and end of march 2020 fell by i believe nifty fell by more than 30% and and lot of the uh, the uh, balance funds also fell by at least 20% uh, it's not more now uh in a balance advantage fund if uh the asset allocation is done in a structured manner it's not that you can't you will completely avoid drawdown but the drawdown uh, uh, would have been essentially lower than than what uh, uh, one witnessed in the balanced or equity hybrid so this dynamic nature of the asset allocation where the equity percentage can be varied significantly is definitely a, a big plus for balanced advantage funds compared to the equity hybrid or the balanced 
right so so my key takeaway is that a balanced advantage fund is basically a much more refined and much more flexible variant of the erstwhile popularly known as balanced uh, funds so this gives you as a fund manager a whole lot more flexibility in ensuring that the clients and the investors interests are protected and played according to various cycles that keep coming up uh, from time to time right perfect yes that that's perfect so so this begs a, a very important question uh, you know so if if uh, in a balanced advantage fund a fund manager is given a lot of flexibility then i am also very intrigued to know that you as a fund manager what is your methodology for deciding how much will remain invested in any asset class at any given point in time so what's your what's your framework kitna kaun se time pe kitna equity hona chahiye kitna debt hona chahiye how do you decide yeah yeah and and this is the most crucial characteristic for any balanced advantage fund in terms of how you go about determining the asset allocation and uh, then a broader question of how do you really go about creating a portfolio construction process right so when we think about our uh, balanced advantage fund the spi balanced advantage fund we essentially think of a three layer process for constructing the portfolio step 1 is asset allocation and i'll i'll briefly go into details in terms of how we do the asset allocation but what is interesting for us is we don't want to stop at step 1 we also have a step 2 and a step 3 the step 2 goes within the equity category and then we also try to ask ourselves the question within equity category how much do you want to allocate to large cap stocks how much do you want to allocate to mid and small cap stocks how much do you want to allocate to cyclical stocks how much do you want to allocate to defensive stocks so those kind of style and 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 size uh, uh, related decisions also come into the picture when it comes to our fund but for step 1 which is the asset allocation component Uh, uh which is in some sense the most important characteristic what we have is essentially a combination of three factors that we look at in a very objective manner the first one is valuation the second factor is sentiment and the third factor is earnings outlook when we talk about valuation for us uh, what is very clear is that you don't want to look at equity valuations in absolute terms you want to look at valuations relative to where debt valuations are because across markets over time uh, we have realized that relative valuations matter a lot more than uh, absolute valuations so we want to look at where are equities placed vis a vis debt yields so that is one important uh, 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 parameter that that uh, we look at. the second parameter that we want to really think about is that we don't want to just look at the current you know trailing 12 month price to earnings or the next 12 month price to earnings Uh, when we think about equity valuations because there is also a well trenched economic cycle that permeates all markets all economies so when you look at just a point in time valuation you are sort of doing a disservice to to yourself so when we think about valuations we want to look at valuations based on earnings that are averaged over an entire economic cycle rather than thinking about just what was the last 12 month earnings or what was the next 12 month earnings. so this cyclically adjusted earnings is also an important factor uh, in our valuation uh, framework so when you put it all together you essentially get a, a, a normalized equity valuation versus debt valuation which is what we use uh, from a valuation framework perspective when equities look very expensive on on this metric we would want to allocate more to debt and vice versa that's basically the valuation component now what is also interesting is that while valuations are very important we have seen that markets can remain overvalued or undervalued for extended periods of time so if you are just going to use valuation as a metric for asset allocation it's probably not going to be the most optimal thing to do and that's where the sentiment part comes in so here on the uh, sentiment side we have created an inos uh, equity sentiment index which looks at a variety of factors but they fall into three broad categories the first one is market internals where what we are trying to do there is we are trying to go underneath the covers and and trying to see how are small and mid cap stocks doing versus large cap stocks how are cyclical stocks doing versus defensive stocks because this gives uh, uh, an important signal in terms of the health of the market so that is something that we look at in the market internals uh, uh, category then there is a positioning and flows category where we are looking at fi inflows outflows where we are looking at flows into equity mutual funds so these are also important uh, uh, parameters that we look at uh, for uh, for determining the overall sentiment 
of the market another important parameter is the primary market issuance or ipo uh, uh, proceeds what you've seen is that ipo proceeds as long as they are below a certain quantum it's actually fine it's it's good from a, a market health perspective but once they exceed a certain threshold when you have a deluge of ipos uh, hitting the market and these are sort of you know mega ipos so the quantum also is is very high from a contrarian perspective this is actually a warning signal uh, uh, for the market and 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 so as part of our sentiment index we are trying to capture this aspect as well the final category that we look at on the sentiment side is what we call as the internet sentiment index where we are looking at google searches for terms like multi baggers 52 week highs you know the terms that people use when they are very excited about the equity markets and when this shows a, a, a significant spike again it is essentially a warning signal for us that that the sentiments are getting sort of very elevated so how do we use the sentiment index we aggregate all these factors and finally we have a reading for the sentiment index when the sentiment index hits a, a sort of a zone of euphoria then we want to reduce allocation to equities significantly similarly on the other side when when sentiment hits sort of the uh, the uh, the zone of worry uh, like what we saw in march or april 2020 where when sentiments were extremely depressed you really want to increase allocation to equities so what we've seen is this marriage so to speak of valuations and sentiments can lead to a very optimal sort of uh, asset allocation even though individually each of them actually have good predictive powers but when you put them together it further enhances the uh, uh, the the signal to noise ratio in terms of determining the allocation to equities and allocation to debt right i mean absolute appreciation of the unique blend of valuation and sentiments that uh, you're trying to implement while managing this fund in fact uh, at the outset it also reminded me of a quote that uh, you know the markets can remain irrational for longer than you can remain solvent and yes. i feel this uh, entire framework is being created to address this very problem and to ensure that you do not get uh, and the investors especially do not get caught in such a trap so so i am in complete appreciation i see the merit in such a thing uh, so this this brings me to a next very critical uh, question okay this is also uh, more from an investor standpoint see uh, balanced advantage funds have been around for very very long okay uh it is almost a surprise that sbi mutual fund did not have it for uh, this long but uh, hmm. you know there are there are just so many options available but i'm sure there is going to be something unique something differentiated that uh, sbi will be bringing to the table with this balanced advantage fund that it is launching so what are the key distinction or key unique factors about sbi balanced advantage funds that makes it really really stand out uh, from an investor standpoint good okay so one uh, uh something that we just discussed this uh, the way we determine asset allocation where we are not only looking at valuations because when we look at the landscape there are many funds that that also uh, try to use valuation as a as a metric for determining the asset allocation right uh, uh what as i just uh, uh, discussed earlier what we realize is that you have to marry valuation with a sentiment based measure and and the sentiment index that we have developed now uh and this was an index that was developed even before we thought about this one so we've been using that uh, uh even otherwise uh, as part of our sort of framework for thinking about markets uh this sentiment index that we have we feel very good about it because uh because when you, and and also in terms of how you marry the two uh, uh because combining the two is also not as straightforward as it seems uh uh so so this combination of valuation and sentiment uh we think is is quite unique and and should definitely help us on the asset allocation front but what i briefly alluded to earlier in terms of this step 2 and step 3 also i think uh, uh is quite differentiated because in step 2 what we are doing is that we are also trying to create an objective framework for deciding on small cap versus large cap defensive stocks versus cyclical stocks allocation growth stocks versus value stocks so we've created a, an objective framework that allows us to go a level deeper and and have a clear cut way of thinking where is the uh, sort of scope for disproportionate returns and we are trying to do it in an objective framework 
So this growth versus value, cyclicals versus defensive, small cap versus large caps. These discussions, uh, we we managed to sort of create an objective framework to to figure out where do we want to be, and that we think can really help investors in this particular fund. The final part is the step three, where we actually pick the uh, uh, actual stocks uh, for building the portfolio. Here, what we are doing. is that we have a pretty uh, uh, a varied in depth uh, uh, research team at ajay mutual each of these analysts are the sector specialists and they've been tracking the sector for a long time what we are telling our analyst team is that you submit your highest conviction ideas every month uh, it need it need not change every month obviously but but make sure that it's refreshed and every month they have to tell us uh, which are their highest conviction ideas. based on that list we are going to uh we are going to select stocks from that particular list that way the stocks in this portfolio essentially represent the highest conviction ideas of the funders which we think can uh, significantly add value uh, and so so the when i think about the three layer process that we have we feel good about each of these steps uh, uh, i mean we are not we have not thought of these steps from oh we just want to be different from someone else uh, uh, but we do think that these three steps are uh, have been carefully uh, thought out and we also feel that in terms of at least what we understand with regards to the other products out there we feel that this can definitely uh, uh, you know uh, be a differentiated product a differentiated product and and can definitely add value to investors right absolutely uh, i i see what are you trying to do here and i can almost uh, visualize the great uh, efficiencies and the effectiveness of such a methodology trickling down into the performance of several other funds also that you manage i i i now see uh, you know i i see in bits and pieces what's the secret sauce to the success of the other funds also that you manage so uh, you know dinesh what's what's the uh, kind of investors that uh, this sbi balance advantage fund is going to be most suitable or most apt for what are the key heuristics or uh, key element uh, you know features of an investor where this applies right. most right you know in general what you've seen uh, and i'm uh, i'm speaking in aggregate terms what do you seen from a human psychology perspective is that investors when i just put them into a, a broad bucket are quite hesitant to invest close to market bottoms so when we look at the aggregate flows right uh, 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 the flows into mutual funds in the march to june uh, time frame of last year it was very low uh right and and but but when i go back in time when the markets were very elevated the flows were actually quite significant and that is just human psychology where we are hesitant to invest close to market bottoms we normally feel comfortable only after the markets have moved up uh, and and you know and, and but the the challenge with that is that valuations are already sort of significantly higher right now what we are doing here is an investor who doesn't want to think about market timing who doesn't want to think okay what is an optimal time to invest uh, 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 you know any such investor should find this fund uh, uh, a very appropriate fund because here the hope is that we will generate long term capital appreciation but we are also going to be very mindful of the risks and the risk that i think about is the significant drawdown risk that that one can see uh, occasionally in a 100% uh, equity pool so any investor who is a bit more uh, risk conscious uh, who is worried about significant drawdowns who is is not willing to think too much about what is the good time to you know get into market uh, and and is worried about that the timing aspect we think any such investor uh, will find it useful to invest in uh, such a fund absolutely so one final question uh, before we move towards the close of this conversation uh people do manage their asset allocation right uh, debt equity gold etc so within equities or let's say considering a mix of debt uh, plus equities what percentage do you think is appropriate for let's say a moderate uh, risk appetite uh, sort of an investor having let's say a five year plus sort of a horizon what uh, proportion of his aggregate portfolio can he allocate to a fund like sbi balance advantage fund right now the, the the challenge with answering this question uh, is the exact percentage obviously depends on the uh, the risk profile of of that particular uh, investor what i'll say is this when i think about what sbi balanced advantage fund is likely to do 
it is likely to provide good long term returns and it is going to it is likely to provide that uh, with sort of uh, only moderate uh, volatility so any investor uh, uh, who is thinking about you know i want a mix of equity and debt uh, uh, i i do not want too much volatility uh, to me this can be a very healthy proportion of their portfolio whether it should be 30% whether it should be 50% 60% or unfortunately uh, you know it's very tough for me to uh, uh, take that call for someone without exactly knowing the specific details but what i'll say is this this can be a core fund uh, for a, in a portfolio mainly because it is already taking care of two main issues it is sort of investing across asset classes so it's investing in both equity and debt so that takes care of one big uh, question that people have you know how much to allocate to hair equity how much to allocate to debt and two because we are also trying to do the job of uh, varying the asset allocation for you so that you don't need to worry about oh now i maybe i need to change the allocation or now i need to increase decrease you don't have to worry about all those things right you don't have to worry about which security should i buy or sell to change my allocation and then worry about the tax bills associated with that and so on right so from that perspective it feels like this can be a a, a core product uh in 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 someone's portfolio uh, uh and what i can sort of say is that from a risk reward perspective this one should definitely do quite well absolutely so for the viewers if any of you are confused as to how do you go about with your asset allocation where would such a product fit why don't you write to us at research@wisdom.com and we'll try and help you out with the guidelines or the key elements that will help you get closer to charting out a very solid uh, allocation plan so dinesh uh, this has been a pretty exciting conversation i am excited for the sbi balance advantage fund nfo that is going to be launched i am pretty confident that investors are going to see merit in the unique framework that uh, you are using out there at sbi mutual fund uh, the entire concept around valuation plus sentiments is a really unique and differentiated proposition that is worth appreciating so uh, dinesh i wish you all the very best for this fund uh, for this nfo and i'm sure that investors are going to see a whole lot of merit uh, allocating to this particular fund thank you for your time and the insights that you have shared with us thank you so much nirav thank you so much for your kind words uh, and yeah, i'm happy to be here uh, if anyone has any uh, uh, you know further questions or needs any uh, further clarification they can definitely reach out to us as well uh, happy to answer any doubts that you have sure thanks a lot dinesh thank you this has been a great conversation great mutual fund investments are subject to market risks read all scheme related documents carefully